Earth. Or and now we're just kind of flowing. Yeah. Look at him. All <laughs> angry and edgy. Yeah. So what's your uh, opinion on the fact that like they brought Shadow back from the dead after SA2 because I think that was supposed to be the original plan but he came back because of fan demand. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally cool with it because Shadow's the coolest, <laughs> but uh, I think it would be pretty neat if someone stayed dead in Sonic. Yeah. Some non-villain enemy. <laughs> You can, yeah, you can definitely tell that SA2 was meant to be, uh, like, Shadow's, like, one-off story, but yeah. they, yeah, they ended up bringing him back. It brought him back to life. They put some I am Shadow Android stuff in other endings of this game. Am I an Android 2? <laughs> and then they do a bunch of, like, jumping around, like, ooh. Is he a real shadow? Is he an android? Yeah. It just uh, man. Yeah, and I feel like it's just for the excuse of having him back. Yeah. Because some people probably do think that our current shadow is just an android, you know? Yeah. It's it's hilarious in this in this game because like um this there's like no consistently with um the story sometimes where um. You could be doing something completely different, and if your mission choice ends up going to Lava Shelter, um, Shadow will just end up randomly going, Oh, so I must be the android that Eggman created. It's like, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> uh, that, that seems like a pretty optimal route to play through the game. Yeah. It's like, the game doesn't care. It, it, it's more concerned about the level you go to rather than the story context. <laughs> no, I feel like I want to design a game with a plotline like that now. <laughs> just like have have one level be like just some something really calm, like maybe maybe a forest level, something really soothing, and then just have the next level be like them in outer space. <laughs> Yeah, for no reason. <laughs> That'd be great. Speaking of outer space, here we are. Yeah, this is a pretty fun level. It's just kind of flying around outside the arc. Yep, it's Final Rush, but Star Fox. Pretty much. God, God, we do we need a we need a good Star Fox game right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we I like a lot of things. I like Zero fine enough, but we don't need another 64 clone. Don't need them, we don't need a game that's there just for the console gimmicks. Yeah. That game definitely felt. You, but I, I tried playing Zero. I, I tried playing Zero at one of my friends' house, and I just. I couldn't. Yeah, I can understand I was like, that. This is just too awkward for me. I feel like that's what one of the main gripes was, probably. Just yeah. how awkward the gameplay was. Like, I respect the vision. I respect the fact that they tried to do something with that console. Yeah. It's just sometimes you just need to make a straightforward game. Yeah. I am sure in this thing, right? <laughs> I hope I can't, so. I can't see! <laughs> <laughs> um. Well. Ah. I. I think I hear it. I think I hear it Damn hitting it. something. Well. I see shadows copying you now, huh? Yeah. Where's even bad words? Where am I even? Oh, it's the turrets. There we go. Oh, come on. And off you go. Nice. Okay, that's fine. Ah. 
Ah. Good lord, they're shooting a lot at you. It's just... What the hell? Oh my god. Yeah. I've played so much Kingdom Hearts 3 lately, every single time that I see anybody get hit in the air, I'm just like, use aerial recovery already! <laughs> yeah, I'm like, use air step. <laughs> air step, yeah, just, just air step it. Air step into him and combo him to death. Yeah. Okay, let's just go in the alien and leave, please. Alright, back to more Star Fox or Gummy Ship or whatever. Oh, we gotta go to Corneria. Dun! Yeah. Dun dun dun! Dun, dun, dun. What a good song. Yeah. Okay, let's not so, pass this. <laughs> so the, the fun thing about about watching this is the the fact that like the, the restream is played at like maybe fifteen frames per second instead oh. of the thirty. So like when you're flying around sometimes you're just like Teleporting through stuff. And oh! Like, Whoa! It isn't an A. <laughs> oh no! I was convinced you were giving an A rank that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes the uh, just it'll like just be really choppy on certain parts, and suddenly you like teleport to another part of the screen. Yeah. So I have to like I basically have to go through some mental gymnastics to figure out what's going on. Well, I hope it's not that bad. Nah, it's not terrible. Okay. It's just that sometimes when there's a billion things on screen. <laughs> like, right now it's perfectly fine. I suppose cutscenes are less, um, demanding. Yeah. Hey, Blue Falcon. You know what we need? F-Zero. <laughs> yeah, Captain Falcon's controlling this thing, clearly. <laughs> yeah, just watch. He's gonna use his special ability when he's at low HP. He's gonna jump out of it and Falcon Punch Shadow. Like, if, if I could be bothered, uh, I, I would edit in a voice clip of Falcon Punch every time he does that <laughs> shockwave thing. <laughs> I'm honestly, probably gonna um, forget to do that, but... Uh, Falcon honestly, I would probably um, edit in a voice clip of him saying, YES! <laughs> Or just do like a random voice clip every time he does the move. Oh yeah. Because I just think Fal Captain Falcon is just a really funny dude. You know? Yeah. He also needs another game. <laughs> yeah, he definitely needs another game. I love how like is Smash 4 um pick of the day or whatever when it when it was like Captain Falcon. Which is like, so when are you gonna get a new game? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like how, um... Falcon kick! I like how people... I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty convinced that there are people out there nowadays who probably think Captain Falcon is a Smash Bros. original character. Yeah. It was, it's just yeah. been that long. It was like, just... I know when... Yes! When, uh, when I was a kid, I was like, what's Captain Falcon from? Because yeah. I only had a... Nintendo 64 with the original Smash Brothers on it, mm. and I had a Super Nintendo with only the Donkey Kong Country. Mm. No so, for, you now. for first of all, what that means is that I didn't know who Mario was when I played Smash Bros. Oh man. <laughs> I didn't know who Luigi was. I didn't know Link. I didn't. I definitely didn't know Ness. <laughs> but Captain yeah. Falcon. Whenever I played Captain Falcon. I, just keep in mind, I was like maybe three years old. Mm. Every single time I played Captain Falcon, he was the only character that I felt like was definitely from Smash Brothers and not from another video game. Yeah. I feel like the only reason he, he's in the game is because he's more like the polygon fires that the game originally was going to have. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's... Definitely what it was. They probably just thought, let's add some more characters. Let's let's keep them similar in build to what we have originally. Oh, <gasps> he cursed. No, no. Oh no. Not for don't let the parents hear it. 
Oh no! Oh, we're gonna get screwed over by Copa. Remember that? Oh God! You're crazy, Mr. President. Get down! <laughs> You know, I, I've got to say, what? that character model's pretty good for this generation. Yeah, for what it's worth, uh, the cutscenes in this game, I think, are done well enough for the time period. Yeah, because, like, this of course... This is pretty good CG as well. Yeah. I mean, the, the PlayStation and GameCube generation can definitely pull out some really nice, like, pre-rendered cutscenes. Hmm. Yeah. And, um, uh, I mean, like, just look at Kingdom Hearts' openings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, when you realize that, uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 was in 2002, and it had graphics like that in the opening, mm -hmm. you start to realize these consoles can do some stuff if you try hard enough. Yeah. Also, I have to give some massive respect to that plane coming down. Because <laughs> when the, uh, when the uh, landing gear so, came down, right? when they popped out, the plane did like a little hydraulic movement. They didn't need to do that. Mm. This, this is really good attention to detail. While it doesn't really seem that realistic, <laughs> it's really yeah. good attention to detail. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's it's something that this game seems to do really well with its whole thing going on. Because of course, I already brought up that dude has heterochromia. Yeah. The, the animation for how he blinked was pretty solid Commander, for something for this, like, generation. Yeah. It's definitely, the animation's they definitely a little bit stiff sometimes, but it's oh, pretty, reports, it's pretty solid for, like, 6th gen. Yeah. By the way, I just thought it was really yeah, funny, the timing of you bringing up the animations being stiff, and they both do a reaction animation. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> how dare you call- <laughs> how dare you judge our animations? Our animations are perfect! There's no useless animation in my grandfather's Shadow the Hedgehog game. <laughs> Always make sure to protect Mr. Shadow President. Death. It's important. <gasps> there it is again. You cursed. You, you, you gotta love how, like, in the dark path, um, you shoot the eclipse cannon and everything, but everyone gets away safely anyway. <laughs> you gotta make sure that it can be properly linked to the proper timeline, I guess. Yeah, like, what Shot. even... <laughs> what even is the canonical, like, route Shadow takes? <laughs> I'm convinced. Okay, you know what? I figured it out. Mm. Androids. <laughs> that answers every single question. I literally all for those other routes, Yeah. All of these routes, they're all androids. That's amazing. All playing at the same time, fighting Android Sonics and Android Eggmen. And Android Black Dooms. <laughs> it's amazing. I literally thought as a kid that every single uh, st uh, story run was ca was canon, and what was happening was that like <laughs> there was like some time loop going on or some crap. You know that would have been pretty cool. Or yeah. At least a good excuse for all these different timelines. Yeah. They probably wouldn't have thought that far though. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the uh, the idea of just saying time loop as an excuse has kind of been a more more recent thing. Either time yeah. loops or uh, different timelines. Oh yeah. Because well, what games came out back then? There's Chrono Trigger. And there's Chrono Cross. Everything dies. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't care, everything dies. <laughs> It's like you're playing boost, but you're hitting them before the boost hits them. Yeah. You can go insanely fast if you, like, if the game lets you. If you don't run into walls. Yeah. I feel like, uh, that was especially, it looked especially fast because of, like, the slightly choppy frame rate. <laughs> you nice. were zooming through that corridor. That's amazing. Yeah, this is a pretty cool final stage in the sense that it's pretty much just 
Gun's Last Stand, and I like how the music basically reflects the fact that, like, uh, Shadow's actions by this point are pretty much irredeemable, and humanity at this point is basically just screwed. Yeah? And, like, even, even the hero ending, um, is more on the dark side, where Shadow's just, like, instead of- the only difference, really, is that instead of joining back Doom, he's like, I'll rule the world by myself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty great. Yeah. So no, no matter what you do here, you're pretty much evil. Yeah. They've got to be after the chaos. It's like either, either you're you're Luke and you joined Darth Vader, <laughs> or you're Luke and you killed Darth Vader to become a new Darth Vader. Yeah. Man, imagine if Star Wars went that route. That would have been crazy. <laughs> Like, they, they both team up and kill Palpatine, and then Luke kills Vader because he's fully succumbed to the dark side. You know, this sounds eerily similar to Force Unleashed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I wish I played the Force Unleashed. I only got to watch my brother play it on his PSP back in the day. Mm. Yes. It was just... Yeah. It was just a- whoops, I accidentally just poked the, the mic. I hope that didn't sound too bad. No, I uh, didn't hear too much of her, it's fine. Alright. Must have just been because I was talking. Probably heard me over it. Probably. But, um... Like, I remember a lot from the game. But... Mm. It's just not something that I ever thought of going back to. Mainly because when I had my PSP, the only thing I would think about was playing through Birth by Sleep. The only th reason enough. why I have a PSP was because I wanted Birth by Sleep. I can understand that. <laughs> Like, I was a very simplistic child. <laughs> when I was... When I was eight years old, I saw a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. Got my mother to buy me a DS because of my great grades. <laughs> got 358 Days Over 2. 2009, I saw the first trailer from a, for Birth by Sleep, or at least not... Probably not the first trailer, but it was a trailer for Birth by Sleep. And uh, I think it was the Tokyo Game Show trailer, and I was like, oh, it's going to be on PSP? Mm -hmm. I guess I need to get a PSP. I uh, gotta love Kingdom like, Hearts and going across a bunch of different platforms. Oh yeah, and, and I feel like the fact that I was a child going through it has definitely made me desensitized to that issue. Yeah. Because I was just thinking, yeah, I just need to get a new console for it. Yeah. It also definitely, it still definitely helped that I got a, a PSP because my brother was really getting into hacking consoles around that time. Hmm. So I had a hacked PSP with like 400 games on it. Nice. But, my PSP was like, well, it, it, I've heard from a lot of people it's like the best PS1 emulator you can find. Oh yeah, it's it can just emulate everything as mm. long as it's graphically possible. Yeah. Because I know that, um, back when I used my PSP, it had a Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis emulator. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that was cool. It had the Game Boy Advance emulator. It basically had anything that was just pixels, like anything that was just like 16 bit lower, I, I had it on my PSP. Nice. At the time, they, yeah, at the time, they hadn't gotten to, like, the higher end stuff, but, like, man, I played a whole lot of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. <laughs> And the game that refuses to get re-released because of legal bollocks. Mm -hmm. I it's, always the, it's always the good games that end up having the legal issues that are yeah. make them impossible to re-release. It's, like, it's like they have Sonic 1 and 2 on the Switch, but like they just can't finish the trilogy. Yeah, I definitely respect the fact that basically everything's being put on Switch. Yeah. Like I feel like um I feel like the issue with the with the Wii U was the fact that a lot of people were just thinking we don't want to have to deal with the gamepad. Yeah, the thing's really and, bulky. Yeah. Yeah, so like a lot of people didn't want to play with it, a lot of people didn't want to definitely didn't want to code for it. Mm. So the, yeah. the Switch being like this really nice and thin console with a gimmick that isn't an absolute nightmare to work around, yeah. probably great for everybody. 
Yeah, pretty much. It's not the most powerful console in the world, but it gets the job done for what it's worth. Oh yeah. It might honestly be my favorite console. Like it's, it's like there's so many games to play on, and it just gets ev like everything <laughs> pretty much. Oh yeah, it's definitely about to get everything soon because because of like Sony's whole uh, what's it called. Sony's whole censorship policies. Oh yeah. Going on. Like I know that the a lot of games that I constantly talk about online end up uh they've ended up getting censored on PlayStation, so all those franchises are hopping At over last, to uh the human switch. Yeah, that's really crushed. bizarre. You'd think it would be the opposite, like Nintendo would do the censoring and Sony wouldn't. Like it's, it's weird how that works. Yeah, like I think of Nintendo as like the Disney of gaming, yeah. except they don't have a monopoly and own everything. Yeah. But so, so just the fact that they're the ones who are just cool with anything being on their console, it's kind of, kind of weird. Yeah, Nintendo are like, Get out of my way. D definitely nowadays they're like really different than they what they used to be. Yeah. I feel like you can definitely tell the difference just based on their marketing. Back when the Wii U was coming out, they were showing a bunch of like kids. Oh god. But then when the when the Switch released, they just immediately the first like four commercials for it. Just a bunch of adults. They showed a dude playing NBA 2K14. Hmm. I know it wasn't one that was actually out yet. If you try to stop me. So like of course that was gonna get someone in there. All right, Shadow's gone full edge now. Yeah, okay, so this is like the worst boss in the game. It's like, he has like a million uh, health points, and uh, the way this works is that the first phase, you force Sonic into a jump, uh, and then just home attack Diablon, until we, until this guy just falls down, and then he just goes, hold still, your, you devil, <laughs> like every five seconds, and then you just kind of shoot him until he dies. It's just kind of tedious and takes forever. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, so I feel like Sonic hasn't moved from his spot this entire time. <laughs> it's like, oh, Shadow, you need to, me to give you a boost? Okay. Yeah, here you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's like not <laughs> doing Sonic anything. Is, yeah, Sonic just turned to the dark side. He's literally only going right in front of Diablon for you. Oh, no, if I can make him do this, uh, I can make him just try and home attack me. And just have him chase me throughout the whole stage is pretty good. <laughs> you have to be like running as he does it though. Yeah, you gotta be like hitting full stride. Yeah. Or you can just stand there, that works too. <laughs> yeah. Look, he's just walking into him. <laughs> Look at him go. Look at him go, he's sliding. Fastest thing alive. <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Them, whatever he says there. What is he even doing? I don't know. Here we He's go. Oh. Sonic was just really closely analyzing the, uh, uh oh. Yeah, he oh. just chases you until he, like, bumps into you. <laughs> I feel like, uh, Sonic was, like, really closely checking the back of that robot just to yeah. make sure it was okay, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would definitely, like, in terms of the three uh, final fights in the game, I'd definitely say this is the worst one. Mm. Seems pretty, uh... I, I can't even come up with a word for it. it. It feels like a boss fight I'd probably lose to a billion times because I'm super impatient. Yeah, and it's like, the boss itself takes forever to kill, and then you have Kind of just have Sonic doing whatever in the background, just being a general nuisance. Sonic's just busy staring at you, then running at you. Yeah. So just. Or you can just oh. do that, okay. <laughs> just phase right through that box. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah. I didn't know Gun had that technology. Oh. Uh. Yeah, there's not really much to say about this guy, it's just, yeah, just kind of, just kind of is. It's a very straightforward look to it. Yeah, 
There is a finite amount of guns here, so that kind of sucks. Yeah, my brain immediately went to, it's time to do, when he said it's time to end this. <laughs> I can't see any guns. There you are. Did I already use them all up? That's entirely possible. Yeah, I uh, uh -oh. Is this just... Oh, it just rings. Well, yeah, I think you're out of guns. Okay. God, this boss sucks. <laughs> I didn't... I knew it was bad, but jeez, like, <laughs> there's like three weapons here, why? It's definitely a slow burn kind of boss fight. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is this hitbox anyway, like? I couldn't tell you, to be honest. I've just been watching you kind of hit them and do a little bit of damage. Yeah. I, I have no good strategy for this guy. I miss should do a decent amount. <laughs> oh. There we go. Progress. Yep. One more maybe? Mm. Oh, okay. Hey. Nice. Okay, that did a lot. Yeah. Progress was definitely made. Yeah. Please don't kill me. It is, yeah, it's time to duel. Yeah. So I'd, I'm probably not gonna ever get this to work, and I've never been able to find this ever again, but I swear I've managed to do this weird glitch in this game some at one point where I don't know how it works, but like you die, but then you just do chaos control to the gold ring at the same time. So the game like gets confused, and like as you're in the the stage results, <laughs> Shadow just goes like, "Damn, not here!" Like as it's loading, <laughs> it's amazing. It's like the game just broke the fourth wall, and Shadow doesn't like being in that area or something. Yeah, so I've tried looking up the glitch, but like I can I can't find it. I don't know. I don't remember exactly how it works, but... Yeah, no, I've, um... There are lots of times when I've experienced a weird glitch in the game and looked it up online just for no one to have ever brought it up. Yeah. It makes me both feel unique and stupid. It also makes me feel like... Like, w was I dreaming or something? <laughs> Yeah, I never get the was I dreaming experience because I only have ever had a dream of playing a video game. Mm. Like I've had some weird dreams. Uh, I. It's uh, never video game related. I don't usually have um dreams of playing games, but um, once I I do remember one time where um, stop me. Uh, Twilight Princess was coming out, and. Uh, it was oh okay <laughs> okay that make I guess it makes sense. Uh, that, that's one way to end it off, huh? Yeah. Um. But yeah, Twilight Princess is coming out, and it was it was like so hard to find GameCube copies of that game, and I remember just having this random dream where <laughs> it <laughs> a bunch of characters from Ocarina of Time were just kind of flying around on some UFO thing. <laughs> it, it made absolutely no sense. Dude, I think you just saw a premonition of Twilight Princess 2. <laughs> Maybe. I feel like either Twilight Princess or Breath of the Wild would be the only ones that would have something close to that. To be yeah, I mean to be fair, like there was Breath of the Wild image like concept of like an alien invasion. I'm Shadow, mm -hmm. the hedgehog. I was created to bring order and justice to the humans. God the animals are shiny in this game. <laughs> 
<laughs> they glow so beautifully. Look at them. I yeah. bet they. I bet they did that so then they wouldn't have to properly design the polygons. Yeah, I swear, like the gray emerald specifically. Like most of the time, it just looks like a white ball. <laughs> also, nice evil laugh there, Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Shadow the Hedgehog, and I will do, I don't know, insert meme quote here. I am Shadow the Hedgehog. I am evil. This is who I am. <laughs> I will be the ultimate pincushion. <laughs> so, that was an entertaining playthrough. Yeah. It went by a lot faster than I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, a blink and it's over kind of situation right there. Pretty much. It's like, um, it's not as, there's more playthroughs you have to do than like in Heroes, but the, they don't take as long, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's probably how it is, because I, re I remember playing through Heroes, especially the Dark missions, and just realizing they never end. <laughs> like, okay, so of course, I, I won a lot your Sonic game, right? Oh yeah, especially after Forces. But, yeah, yeah, but I don't think I won a Sonic game with heroes length levels, unless of course yeah. it's Eggman Land again, because Eggman Land needs to be twenty years long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think um, I'd like around four minutes. Uh, up to that is fine, like four to, I guess, seven minutes at most. Yeah. I feel like a lot of my favorite Sonic levels were levels that I beat in around seven minutes. Yeah. I've noticed that the, the stages in this game tend to go around that uh, kind of length too. Mm. It's just, it feels right in terms of pacing, in my opinion. Yeah. Because, like, if Sonic's about going fast. If you're in a level for like 40 minutes, can you say you're going fast? <laughs> I mean, that's basically every level in Shad Sh Sh Crystal. Mm -hmm. And like, it it's also like this like alternate thing where you're playing forces. You don't feel like you're going fast, but suddenly you're at the end of the level. Yeah. It's so like... I feel like. God. I feel like. The franchise needs to find like this middle ground, yeah. where they you can look like you're going fast and actually beat the level in a respectable amount of time. I feel like the game that got closest to that was Unleashed, for sure. Yeah, like the day stages in Unleashed are definitely some of my favorite stages in any Sonic game. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I I feel like with the low low budget. Uh, nowadays with uh, Sega, I feel like going back to an adventure style would benefit them a lot because they uh, they can make levels a lot longer and not have to spe like spend a bunch of time and money making one stage because of the how the boost works. Oh yeah, and plus like they could just extend a lot of stuff that way. Yeah, they could uh. If they want a two minute long level, they can make a two minute long level, make it take like seven minutes to actually reach that level. Yeah. And, um, goodness, like, <laughs> not, not have a game where you spend like a minute in a level and just be it. Yeah. So, <sighs> is that it? Yep. So, you got anything else you want to say? I don't really have much else to say. Okay. That was just fun to watch. Thank you for having me. No problem. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's gonna be the end of that, and I'll see you guys for whatever else, whatever the next story path is. I don't even remember, so. Yeah, bye, I guess. <laughs>